Reflections, Chapter 2, Lesson 4, The Eastern Woodlands. What to know? How did the geography and climate of the Eastern Woodlands affect the American Indians there? Describe how the Eastern Woodlands peoples adapted to their environment. Locate the Eastern Woodlands cultural region and compare their ways of life, their life ways. Explain the Iroquois system of government. You are there. Imagine playing a ball game with other Iroquois children, scooping up the ball in the small leather basket attached to the end of your stick. You run towards your opponent's goal, darting past the other players. You can hear your family's shouts of encouragement as you make your way across the long playing field. As you fling the ball toward the goal, your heart races with excitement. Your brave play will bring honor to you and your family. Score! And the Iroquois ball game was played using sticks of wood and a deerskin ball. Fast fact, lacrosse, as it is played today, is closest to the game played by the Iroquois. Lacrosse uses sticks with nets on one end so that teammates can pass a ball to each other. That beautiful. The people of the Eastern Woodlands used wood from the region's many forests to make their homes and tools. Life in the Eastern Woodlands. If you're taking Cornell notes, we're setting up our notes with this on the left side. How did life in the northeastern part of the eastern woodlands differ from life in the southern part? Life in the eastern woodlands. The eastern woodlands cultural region stretched east of the Mississippi River spreading across most of what is now the eastern half of the United States. The region's name came from the thick forest that once, that once covered the region. Along the banks of rivers and streams flowing through the forest, the eastern woodlands people built their villages. These people all shared the same important natural resource trees. They used trees and tree bark to make canoes and shelters, and they carved tools and weapons from wood. Trees also provided the people with food, such as wild fruits. The eastern woodlands people were farmers as well as hunters and gatherers. In the northeastern part of the woodlands, where the soil was rocky, People did more hunting and gathering than farming. The men hunted animals for food and used antlers and bones to make tools. Using spears and nets, they fished in the region's many lakes and rivers. Meanwhile, the women prepared the food and used animal skins to make blankets, clothing, and moccasins. In the southern areas, where the soil and climate were better for growing crops, the people raised corn, beans, squash, and other plants. Generally, the men cleared the land for planting, and the women and children were responsible for planting, caring for, and harvesting crops. So how did life in the northeastern part differ from life in the southern part.
your next section, the Iroquois. Iroquois. Set up your notes. The people of the northeastern part of the eastern woodlands included the Iroquois. They lived in the area around the Great Lakes in what is now Pennsylvania and New York and the Lake Ontario region of Canada. Not all of the Iroquois people spoke the same language, but their languages were similar. They also had similar customs. Like other Eastern Woodlands Indians, the Iroquois farmed and lived in villages. Most tribes built their villages along the banks of rivers or streams for fresh water. These villages were often large and included several houses and a building for meetings and ceremonies. For protection against enemies, many Iroquois built palisades. Palisades were walls of tall wooden poles around their villages. Like the Macaw, the Iroquois lived in longhouses. However, Iroquois longhouses had some differences. They were smaller, but could still fit up to 20 families. The frame of a longhouse was made by cutting poles from young trees, bending the poles, and then covering them with bark. Each longhouse was divided into sections, and each section was home to one or two families. Near their villages, the Iroquois grew three main crops, corn, beans, and squash. The Iroquois called these the Three Sisters because all three were planted, planted together in the same field. After a field was farmed for a few years, the soil became less fertile, so the Iroquois would then begin planting in another location. Like many American Indians, like many other American Indians, the Iroquois used wampum, wampum, to make beaded designs that showed important decisions, events, or stories. And let's look at this. Two pages. And a closer look at an Iroquois village. Iroquois villages were often located on top of steep-sided hills. The steep slopes helped protect Iroquois villages from enemies, from other um, Native American groups. Number one, corn, beans, and squash were planted near Iroquois villages. Two, the Iroquois were skilled hunters who made sharp, who made sharp arrowheads out of flint. Number three, the Iroquois women wove baskets using reeds. They wove baskets using reeds, and the Iroquois used animal hides to make clothing. And here's the long houses. Why do you think it was common to have an open area at the center of an Iroquois village? So we were reading about wampum. Wampum, strings of beads cut from seashells, was also traded and exchanged for goods. 
Five of the largest Iroquois groups were the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, and Cayuga, and the Seneca. Known as the Five Nations, these people often battled each other over control of hunting areas. Even within a group, people sometimes fought to settle arguments. A legend, a legend about one argument tells of an Iroquois warrior named Hiawatha, who it was said killed, sorry, who it was said saw his family killed by members of another group. By tradition, Hiawatha was expected to kill those who had killed his family. However, he wanted the fighting to stop. Hiawatha left his village and met another Iroquois named Deganawida, Deganawida, who became known as the Peacemaker. In time, the two men persuaded the Five Nations to unite and work together as a group. The group that formed was called the Iroquois League. It was a confederacy. It acted as a confederation, a loose group of governments working together. Members from each of the five tribes were sent to speak for their group. They joined the Grand Council, which the League set up to settle disputes, fights, among the people, peacefully. What was the Iroquois League? Now we're looking at the Algonquians. Algonquians. Go ahead and set up your notes chart. This drawing of Algonquian Indians was made by English settler John White in the early 1600s. Take a moment to study that. Algonquians. Algonquians used beeswax to make dolls. How did the diet of the Algonquians differ? How was it different from that of the Iroquois? Let's read. Like the Iroquois, the Algonquian people are grouped together because they spoke similar languages. Most of the people who spoke Algonquian languages lived on the coastal plain near the Atlantic Ocean. Among them were the Delaware, the Wampanoag, Wampanoag, and the Powhatan. Powhatan? Powhatan. Other Algonquian groups lived farther inland around the Great Lakes. These people included the Ottawa, Ottawa, the Chippewa, and the Miami. Most Algonquian people had anywhere from one to two villages. Some groups built longhouses similar to those of the Iroquois. Others built round, bark-covered shelters called wigwams. Apart from their shape, wigwams were made in much the same way as longhouses. The trunks of small trees were bent, tied together into a dome shape, and then covered with bark. Like their Iroquois neighbors, the Algonquians hunted and gathered. Both groups farmed, but the Algonquians who lived near the coast did not rely on their crops for food as much as the Iroquois did. Fish was an important food source. 
the Algonquians built birch bark canoes to fish in the rivers and along the coast. They used animal bones and wood to make hooks and fishing traps. The Algonquians made clothing mostly from deer skin, which kept them warm during the cold winters. Men, were, men wore shirts, leggings, and moccasins. They usually tied one or two eagle feathers to their hair. Women usually wore dresses. Both men's and women's clothing was decorated with feathers, shells, and porcupine quills. Many Algonquian groups had leaders who governed more than one village. Some Algonquian people had two chiefs, one to rule during times of peace and the other to rule during times of war. Among Algonquian groups, marriage ceremonies were very much alike. If a man wanted to marry a woman, he would take her a gift of meat from an animal he had hunted himself. This showed he was a good hunter. If the woman wanted to marry him, she would accept the gift of meat and cook it. This showed she was a good homemaker. When the couple shared the meal, they were considered married. So I guess you had to be careful who you ate with. <laughs> How did the diet of the Algonquians differ from that of the Iroquois? In summary, the people of the Eastern Woodlands relied on trees for food, shelter, and transportation. The two main language groups of the Eastern Woodlands were the Iroquois and the Algonquians. And here are our review questions for discussion. <music>